Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today, in this video, I am going to show you guys, how to start using ESP8266. I am going to use the AT command sets, to create a web server. I am using real term, as a serial monitor. Let me just show you the port, where the ESP is connected to. As you can see, it's COM6. The connection of ESP, with the FT232 is shown in the picture. You can pause here and take a better look. Go to real term, and open the port 6. My device is running at board rate of 115200, it might be different in your case. Check the device details, where you bought it from. Check the CR, and LF boxes. These are needed for the AT commands. Here is the manual for AT instruction sets. First, we are going to take a look at AT command. This basically checks if the device is connected or not. As you can see, the device returned OK. So the connection is good. I am going to restart it using the RST command. It restarted, but as you see the last two messages, it has been connecting to a Wi-Fi. So, I will just restore the factory settings, to ensure the transparent process. I am using the command restore for that process. It is restored to factory settings now, and there is no connection. Let's take a look at our first command. AT plus CW mode is used to set the configuration for the device. It can be configured to use as a station, or as an access point, or both. Let's first check the default configuration. Adding a question mark means, we are querying. It returned 2, which means that it is in access point mode. But we want it to be a station, so that it can be connected to our Wi-Fi. So set the CW mode as 1. Now you can see, it's returning 1. Now, as the ESP can be connected to a Wi-Fi, we are going to connect it to 1. CW LAP is used to list all the access points that are available in the range. It returned 3 AP. Mine is the middle one. It's time to join the access point now. To do so, we will use the command CWJ. The usage of it is given in the example below. Basically, we have to enter, cwjap, equals, the name of the AP, comma, the password of the AP. It is now connected to the Wi-Fi. But this connection is just, temporary. If the device restarts, it will be lost. To make it permanent, we have to write it to the default settings. CWJAP underscore def is used for the purpose. And now the connection is permanent. Let's restart the device and test it.
As you can see, it is connecting to the Wi-Fi by its own. Next thing we need, is the IP address of the device. CIFSR is the command to do so. It have returned the IP address here. Copy it, you are going to need it. We can also use the static IP, using the sipsta def command. The example is mentioned here itself. I am not using one this time. Cause this IP, that we got, is also static, and I am okay with it. SIPMUX command is used to set the multiple connections. By default, it is set to 0, so we are going to set it to 1, so that we can use multiple connections. Next, we are going to create our server, and a T plus SIP server is used for the same. One creates the server, and a T is the port. If you want, you can set the maximum number of connections allowed by the server. The usage is given here. I will show you what is meant by number of connections in a while. Let's now go to the IP address of our device. If you look at the terminal, the device got a request. The important part, that we are interested in, is the connection number. It is zero, as mentioned here, after IPD. We are going to send some data to this connection. AT plus SIP send is the command to do that. The first parameter is the connection number, and second is the length of the data that you want to send. In our case, the the number is 0, and length for hello world is 11 characters. Next, we have to send the data. Once the data length is reached, you will receive OK. At last, Close the connection using SIP close equals connection number. Once done, you can check the browser for the data. And yes, we did receive the hello world. Let's refresh this page. We are again getting the request from same connection number. Now to show multiple connections, I will try to access the IP from another browser. As you can see, this time the connection number is 1. So right now, the device is getting requests from two connections, at the same time. And I will send the data to the connection 1.
Let's first close the connection 0, and see what happens. As you can see the Edge browser's connection is closed without any data. And Chrome is still waiting. Now I am closing connection 1, which is the Chrome's connections. And yes, the Chrome received its data successfully. We can also check the status of the connection, using SIP status command. Right now it's disconnected. Let's refresh the edge connection, and check the status again. This time you can see the TCP connection is established. This time connection number is zero again. I will send hello Chrome to the edge. And close the connection zero. And it received the data successfully. Of course guys. This is just the getting started tutorial. We will create an actual web page in the next tutorial. Also we will work on some IoT related stuff. Hope you liked the video. Have a nice day.